This show is too precious, it's too cute, it's too sweet for its own good. It's the show that has already given us all diabetes ever since the first couple of episodes, but honestly, if 2020 needed a cure of any sorts, this would be the closest thing to a vaccine in my honest opinion. This would just rid all of the bullshit that 2020 has experienced away if we could just inject Tonikawa into everyone's veins. We would just be at world peace, I feel like. Uh, this show just warms my heart. I love the idea of these newlyweds. I love the idea of even like Chitose trying to like stop them and her over exaggeration of what happens on honeymoons. A guy stubs his toe or he loses his wallet and they get a divorce when they get back to the airport. If that happens, there's a lot of cans of worms that have yet to be opened that should have been opened well before they even proposed or got married, things like that. So I love the idea of starting the episode with once again the maids kind of like, really kind of saying how we're all feeling. Are you stupid? Are you evil? They're perfect. They're cute. They're blushing. They're having fun. And then you get this lunatic wannabe psycho villain who's like, ha ha ha, he forgot his wallet. This is it. This is the moment. And even if that bus left with his wallet and they had no money and had to sleep on a bench all night, you know damn well that she would be holding him tight, keeping him warm, and he would be in heaven. And he would do the exact same for her. It's very nice to have such basic ideas at a surface level be actually really interesting subject matter for the episode at play. You can break down this episode pretty easily. You have the whole bus stop scene where you have different food courts, you have the food, what they're going to eat. Oh, she's really excited about this like lime ramen. Turns out that it's pretty bad. It's pretty plain. And you get these cute little moments back and forth about trying new things and encouraging her and taking pictures of her embarrassment and her sucking on a sour piece of fruit. There's a lot of little funny moments. And then of course you get the confrontation with Chitose. And then you get the actual like fake date with our boy, with Chitose, and then you get the maids talking with our girl Sukasa. That's what the episode was, and most of the ideas are pretty basic when you strip it down and just look at it at surface level. But watching all these interactions take place, you get a piece of development I didn't think we'd see so soon. Chitose is a type of character who I don't think will necessarily give up. In a lot of ways, I feel like she might actually be in love with our girl. But it's interesting how she's so protective of her and usually with these protective tropes with the whole like sister sort of dynamic they're not actually sisters but it's the closest thing to what probably someone like Sukasa looks at her as where maybe she wanted to be a bit more especially with some of her dialogue talking about how like if anyone should have been in love with you it should have been me because I know you a lot better but still it does feel like she, at the end of the day even if she isn't trying to be with her exactly she wants what's best for her and that's what frustrates her so much because she knows that this is the exact type of guy that Tsukasa would absolutely want. So it's fun to see the kind of separation. That was actually my favorite part of the episode because the first half was kind of what you expect for this show and that's all well and good. I'm not saying the formula is dry or repetitive, but that's kind of what you expect. The whole bus stop and them doing cute things together and sharing and making memories and taking photos, that's what you expect from the show at this point. The second half was actually new territory that really impressed me and has me incredibly excited for meeting the parents next week. This almost felt like the trial run of like the parents are the big boss of the game where you get Chitose who's kind of like the mini boss who you kind of look at as like Bowser Jr. Bowser Jr. is not anyone to be scared of but Bowser himself you feel a bit different. The parents for our boy is really Bowser where this girl is just ridiculous. So to have him actually show her what he's capable of and like what you know someone like Tsukasa sees in him the whole idea of the little cart ride and then you have like oh this is what we'll do we eat these food and it's interesting how she throws it in his face being like see you know nothing about her she's athletic she does this and the boy is just so pure that he blushes like oh i didn't know that but that's another reason why i want to love her and i thought that's how the whole situation was going to go with just simple like back and forth like i find her cute she finds me cute sort of a situation but that moment towards the very very end of the episode where he starts talking about love it's not like about you know having to prove your love before you marry, the whole idea of marriage is proving your love for life. And I really agree with that statement. Like the idea of like explaining why you love someone is very difficult to do. And I think if you're actually in love with someone, I don't think there's a way you can properly break down your love to someone not in that relationship. Between the relationship, it's very easy to express it, but to explain to someone else like why it is, like you can give basic ideas of why you love the person. So to have him just say like, the idea is for me to prove my love for life, that's probably the best example to give why you're a perfect couple, in my honest opinion. And that's why she probably kind of went home in defeat for the time being. And 
that's what I really like about it, especially when you look at Sukasa's side and she's talking about how, like, oh, he's cute, and they're like, oh, yeah, so it was love at first sight. Well, you know, I also like this about him, like this about him, and just the embarrassment. It was just so cute to see two very polar opposite sides. The maid's really encouraging the love, where you have Jatose trying to, like, just break it apart. It was just really wholesomely hilarious and adorable, and honestly progressed the plot for these characters into a decent stopping point, if I'm being honest, and actually leads into episode 8 to be really interesting, and kind of gives that kind of teaser and that testing round to hopefully deal with the parents and not have it be as chaotic as we're probably thinking it's going to be. Like I mentioned, the first half of the episode is kind of what we expect for Over the Moon for you at this point in time, but that's not to say it was bad. It was very cute. It, I just love the idea of like her being so passionate about food. I mean, even once they reach their destination, she's wanting to do the same thing she can do back home and that just triggers him. And I love their fights. Their fights are literally like, no, we're going to go look at historical thing. No, we're going to go look at food. I like this food. How can you not be passionate about this food? They're not fights, but like someone like Jatose is like foaming at the mouth. Here it is. The divorce is coming. Where the maids are like, these are so cute. They are precious. We need to protect them at all costs. And I like that about the episode and how they really just have fun with the basicness. And that really is a great example of like a good relationship. You can do absolutely nothing. You can be at a food court just enjoying food, or you can be talking about what is passionate for you, museums and things like that. And just being around that person is going to make that into a five-star hotel luxury vacation. And that's what really does sell the show to me, is that it really does feel like someone who wrote a story that is unrealistic with its intro and kind of like its concept, but the actual interactions between these two newlyweds is written by someone who understands what a relationship is and can be. And that's what makes it so, I think, wholesomely relatable and perfect. It just really does feel like it's anime, it's ridiculous, it has its tropes and its gimmicks that we can recognize, but the execution and just the actual real dialogue when we really focus in on the meaningful parts to the show, it feels real, it feels vulnerable, and it just melts your heart. And you don't stress about watching it, you don't feel like characters are going to get hit by a train. You don't feel like anything bad is going to happen. You know the worst drama that comes is going to lead to something cute down the line. That's what really makes me happy about watching the show. And it's why it's personally the thing that I look forward to the most on Fridays. There's a lot of great anime that airs on Fridays. But for me, it's a thing that I know I'm just going to melt at. And it's something that's going to entertain me through and through. This is a show that you would think there isn't a lot to talk about each week that you haven't already talked about before. But just looking at this episode, even though it's more cute shenanigans and once again the maids and Chitose and things like that, you really can see once again a new progression for the relationships. There are many fights that aren't really fights, but it still is something they really don't have to deal with too often. The whole idea of actually getting some development between Nasa and also Chitose and them kind of reaching a middle ground where she probably doesn't fully approve and probably will still try to push them away but can't deny that he's a good person and probably is the best fit. She'll just probably try to be an even better fit or something like that. Actually having them butt heads in this episode before officially meeting the parents, it is a great way to really kind of set the stage and show us what they're capable of and really making us feel like this is all going to work out at the end of the day. And I like that about the show is that it does have such basic ideas for its episode's structure but it feels anything other than basic. It feels flawless. It feels like this is what you want to see from Over the Moon, and it really does bring a giant grin to your face. I really do feel like the Bowser analogy is the best way to describe this. Jatose is Bowser Jr. We dealt with her without much struggle. You're not going to die fighting Bowser Jr. the first time, but maybe you'll die a couple times fighting Bowser. So kind of expecting the parents will give him a run for his money, but then again, it might be the easiest situation ever, but I guess time will tell. Let me know your thoughts and feelings and your favorite moment down below. What did you think and where do you think it might go next week? If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, show your support, and hit that subscribe button if you're happy new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.